I wanted to talk a little about kind of a unique topic. Uh, it's related to color matching and color blending, which I've talked about in some other videos. But one of the struggles specifically that I have sometimes as kind of a, uh, a newer painter is matching those colors when I blend them. So like I'll identify little sections within a portrait and try to match or blend the paint to that section. Um, I think that's a pretty common and natural approach when you're painting. Like for example, the cheek area that I have on screen right now, that's a very reddish pink color. So looking at the reference, your natural instinct probably is to start trying to blend, start trying to add cadmium red and yellow ochre and maybe blend a little titanium white in there and try to find the right balance, the right color to match what you're seeing. This is very hard for me. I imagine it's probably relatively hard for um, other painters that don't have like that expert level experience, which I, you know is, is my category of, of painter as well. So one of the approaches that I've taken or started taking to kind of mitigate that a little bit is what I kind of refer to as backwards color matching. So what I mean by that is instead of trying to continue to blend and test to match something in a reference, you might try to do that realizing that maybe it, you know it's not gonna match exactly. So the colors that you're mixing and blending on your palette, you kind of work backwards and look, okay, I've blended this up. Now what sections of the reference photo match this blend that I made? Usually there's gonna be more than one section, hopefully. Um, you know, sometimes it's sparse. There might be a couple little tiny zones where you, you put that color, but um, working this way, you can kind of slide down a scale. So like add that yellow ochre, add that cadmium red, add some titanium white and get a little blend like a mid color. Find where those are in the subject, then start moving up the scale of lightness start adding more titanium white and gradually lightening it up. Or the opposite of that, you could kind of darken it up, start adding some raw umber, bring it down, make it darker, and gradually do that and continue to look back at your reference and, and push those points, find those points within your painting. In the painting on screen right now, I actually did that quite a lot. I was finding that I wasn't having good success with my blending, so I decided to work backwards like this. Blend first, then try to find spots that match that. Um, again, this is something that was counterintuitive to me. I, I always instinctively wanted to try the other direction, but uh, if you are having some trouble blending, this is a solution that might actually work for you. So um, I, did, I just wanted to put that out in a video as a, a little tip to, you know, look this way or this way to try to help yourself. So, um, you know, I mentioned kind of bringing the value lighter, bringing it darker. Obviously there's lots of different ways to do that titanium white to pull it to the lighter end. Or if there's some other color hues that make sense, like if you need to add a little cadmium yellow to it to add that tint, or if you need to go the darker route instead of adding some raw umber to make it darker. Um, perhaps the skin tone has more browns in it. Maybe you need some burnt sienna or you need to, to pull some shadow out. Like on this one, I used a lot more blue than I usually do. Just adding various blue hues. You can use that to make kind of a cooler color, a darker color as well. Uh, so you can, you can change the direction in that way, but I find this, col this backwards color matching to be kind of a useful thing when you're not having as much success as you want with your blends. So that's all I have on this topic. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next one.